The path to becoming an air traffic controller is quite interesting and varies from place to place. This is because requirements are set by the civil aviation authorities of each country. Today, let's take a look at some of these requirements. From our research, it would appear that every country has different requirements in order to become an air traffic controller. In general, however, we can say that the following requirements seem to exist in some form across the board. You must meet some basic standard of medical fitness. You must complete secondary school. You should have the legal right to work in the country of the organization, although this varies from full citizenship to an appropriate work permit. And finally, you must have acceptable English skills. Outside of these basic requirements, things vary wildly from authority to authority. We should note that the following examples exclude basic medical and legal requirements since they appear to be fairly similar. Working at Eurocontrol as an air traffic controller begins with specialized training, which the organization will pay for. Trainees will also get a monthly allowance while they learn. However, to be eligible for consideration, applicants must be younger than 27 when the training starts, have completed their secondary education at an advanced level with mathematics as a subject, and must not have failed similar training elsewhere. Becoming an air traffic controller at NAV Canada starts off similar to that of NATS or Eurocontrol. Becoming an air traffic controller or flight service specialist does not require any prior experience or specialized training. All training is provided, its website states. To be eligible, however, candidates must, among other things, be 18 years or older and have a high school diploma or equivalent. And finally, the FAA requires candidates to be aged 30 or under on the closing day to the application period, pass a security investigation and of three years of progressively responsible work experience or a bachelor's degree or a combination of post-secondary education and work experience that totals three years. The FAA also notes that it has a partnership with selected colleges and universities in the form of the Air Traffic Collegiate Training Initiative program. This, it says, is a valuable source of applicants for air traffic controller positions. Sample programs mentioned on the FAA's list include Arizona State University and its Bachelor of Science in Aeronautical Management Technology, Air Traffic Management, the Broward College Air Traffic Control Program, and the Jacksonville University Air Traffic Control Track. As a result of our research, it's clear that becoming an air traffic controller doesn't simply consist of enrolling in a specific school program. Rather, it appears that the bar is actually quite low when it comes to being eligible for consideration. However, while the minimum requirements might be low, many note that the selection process is rigorous and challenging, with only a very small percentage of applicants having the aptitude and ability to complete training and qualify for an ATC license. Is this a career you've ever considered? Let us know by leaving a comment. In addition to our daily YouTube videos, Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.